What's up guys, today we're with Nobkex and he made a video recently when he was visiting, or I guess you made it long time ago to be honest, but when you were visiting the Plarium studio, you kind of got to hang out with them and you got to like hear all kinds of stuff from their perspective. And one thing that really like uh, I took from that video, which made me feel really bad, is that often us players, and especially I would say myself, I do complain a lot about stuff, and I'm not usually very negative, but sometimes I say stuff like Parium doesn't play the game and they don't care about anything. And I remember one example was when Warlord was buffed four years ago. I don't know if you remember that one. I don't remember, actually. No, I, I wasn't playing four years ago. Oh, oh, oh okay. <laughs> my, my bad. So... <laughs> like, yeah, this is super long time ago, but uh, mm -hmm. Warlord, the arena meta was different back then than it is right now. Warlord was in every single classic arena defense team, kind of like Taras was a while ago. You wouldn't find a single team without Warlord, and it was the best champion in the game for PvP, and they buffed Warlord. And I was saying it for a long time that, like, that, that explains why, like, Plarium doesn't actually play the game or one of the employees buffed Warlord, or, or he pulled Warlord and he buffed Warlord because of that, because it, it made no sense that they buffed him. And often we have all kinds of updates and I kind of look at the negative aspects because I'm super into the game and, you, you know, I'm very hyper-focused on like PvP perspective and endgame player's perspective. And mm. it might kind of feel like Plarium doesn't care. But on your video, you were kind of talking about the other side and making me feel a little bit bad about it can you can you like speak up a little bit about that yeah sure absolutely i mean uh i i i think you don't need to feel bad about complaining in in general like that's fine it's human nature like one thing i was actually really surprised by as well was like when i was chatting to to the associate game developer but like he actually watches youtube videos and stuff about the game i'm like man that dude must have such a thick skin because it's just it's, it's really human nature. You see it with with every game community, like people are really invested in the game. They care a lot. And, you know, sometimes they, they, they complain a lot. And that must be tough to listen to if you're a developer. So I was really shocked, honestly, when he was like, yeah, you know, I watch your videos and like I, I try to watch as many of the videos as possible and stuff like that. I was like, that's that's nuts. <laughs> like, you know, for me, I would be. Like I'm pretty thick skinned as well, I think, but uh, I would still be like, man, that that I still feel like I'd probably be like pay someone else to, to watch the vids. Just the community team, I'd be like, just just sum it up for me, guys. I I, I don't want to hear all the criticism faced, of, which you're gonna face with with every game. So I, I I'd say that the developers are also kind of used to it as well. It's what you expect. I would I would expect uh, if you're a game dev, especially for a popular game, a game with multiplayer and all of that that people love is you're going to hear a lot of complaints. <laughs> so, um, yeah. <laughs> yeah, th th that was one of the parts that really like stuck me on the video. I think the one you're talking about was the uh, Stanislav, was the yeah, yeah. game director. And he was talking about the fact that when he commutes to work, he takes his time to watch raid videos. And I think you were also saying that when you were at the studio, somebody was like, I think it was it one of the developers, he was like farming Fire Knight on the side yeah. of the screen. And they like, when you were talking with them, when you guys were out, some of the Parium employees were like big whales in the game and so on. Mm -hmm. And also another like part about that is that um, recently, I feel like this year, Parium has actually done a lot of good stuff. Something that I have been asking for long, long time, like the, now we're getting the Tavern update and we are getting lots of champion rebalances. We kind of got indirect nerf to Taras with Ankara and a lot, multiple other very good stuff. But then on the video, you were saying that often the Plarium employees have heard, of, heard this stuff long time ago and they have possibly already fixed it and they just can't talk about it because it isn't like implemented in the game. and players keep like complaining about it and flaming about it and all of the new stuff that we recently got like the good good updates that i just mentioned 
those are some of the things that I have been asking and complaining for a long time, y years, but now I kind of feel bad about it because I have been specifically about those things. I have been talking about them in the content creator chat. I have been like asking like, uh, like for instance, the roadmap thing. I was also asking, can we get more roadmaps? And I was asking about the uh, swapping items with champions. Like if we quickly take a look at the roadmap, mm. but we got stuff like epic empowerment and artifact presets and accessory filters. I have been directly like maybe a little bit like uh, bombarding the <laughs> Banana Cham and Cyrilla in the content creator chat. And chances are that they had already planned to do this like months ago, I guess. Yeah, I mean, it, it's their job to listen to that stuff as well. Uh, so, <laughs> you know, you, you kind of just you have to give the feedback. Like, that's the thing. On the flip side, imagine that you are like, oh, let's assume that they're working on it in the background and I'm not going to give the feedback. But then they weren't working on it. And because you never gave that feedback, then they never did. So I, I, I do think it is important to keep giving the feedback. And yeah, I'm, I'm sure for like the community managers and stuff, they get sick of hearing the same things over and over again. But like that, the way I see it is it's, it's their jobs to listen to it. And they would obviously tabulate that. And I, I'm sure they bring like trends. Like, so that, that's important as well. Um, and, and I think that's something that a lot of people forget as well when giving feedback um, is that you know you are only one part of the player base like you're not the whole player base and, and stuff that's super important to you might not be important to other players and I would think that that's like the community manager's job is to be like okay this is what different parts of the community think they all agree on this where some of them really value this some of them really value that instead so like one example would be let's say like polymorph is obviously for a long time been an absolutely massive issue for for high end arena um because you know like five six star polymorph is is just ubiquitous like it's all over the place for a lot of other players um you know that's probably there's not that much polymorph there is some but i even i suspect a lot of people in the comment section that hate polymorph probably have no idea what content creators are actually talking about when you're going in and you're fighting like whole teams where you've got multiple champions and six star polymorph and how that twists things you know, they might be like, oh, well, I got polymorphed once by like a one star polymorph. That was annoying. So it is really bad. Um, but, you know, like for a developer, they might be like, OK, I don't know. Maybe it's not their priority right now to fix it. Maybe they're like, ah, oh, well, sure, we want to fix that. But there's a, I, again, I don't know. I'm just this is pure speculation, by the way. But they might be like, oh, yeah, we want to fix that. But, you know, there's other things to fix first that are going to impact more people. And that's what we want to look at instead. Like maybe this stuff. I don't know. Um, uh, so that's tricky. Uh, I think another another thing we didn't mention, but I think that that people make a mistake about as well is is assuming about how hard it is to do things like again, uh, unless you're information directly from a game dev, it's really hard to say how quickly like you know it's the thing we love to say they could fix that and just one one guy in one afternoon and you could fix all the problems um like i think that all that stuff is probably much more complicated i know specifically from an art perspective for instance like one of the things i, I learned this from when from when i was playing heroes the storm actually uh, i was sort of thinking like why did they not just do more skins like you know skins are cool there's some champions that know skins like just churn them out okay, same sort of thing with raid there's not that many skins I remember actually talking to to one of the artists that was working on Heroes of the Storm, and they're like, the amount of work that goes into a skin is so much more than the community actually thinks. Uh, and like people are asking for for more of this stuff, and like they've got no clue at all what's involved in actually producing a skin. Like it's way more intense. We can't just churn them out. And I was like, oh, okay, I hadn't realized that. Um, and that's sort of my approach as well. Maybe some stuff is really quick and easy. Maybe some stuff takes ages, but. I genuinely don't know, <laughs> you know, mm. I don't know. I can, I can say what I want to see more of. Um, and I, I think giving that feedback is important, but uh, I, I don't like, for me, I, I would avoid stuff like saying that, you know, the game devs are lazy. I think that's, that's a lazy excuse, actually, funny enough. Like it's hard to know. To, ironically in game dev, um, you know, often they're extremely overworked <laughs> and they've got yeah, terrible of course. working hours, you know, so Calling game devs lazy is quite quite silly. Usually, it's it's often far from the truth. And you know, or saying they don't care. I, I don't know. Like, 
I feel like those are sort of making just character judgments for something that mm. you don't like in the game, but like you've got no basis for it. Like, I don't know. If if I went into the Plarium office and they were all just like lounging around and they're like, are we going to work today? I don't know, man. I'd be like, all right, they're lazy. But, <laughs> you know, unless I've seen that, like just making it up is just uh, it's just projecting bad character traits onto someone because because you don't like something and but you've got no idea so i i don't like that personally so yeah it's a big big ramble yeah I, no no it's good i i kind of went on big monologues as well i kind mm. of can relate to that stuff i feel like kind of like i said to you before the video that i don't generally consider myself very negative guy i'm usually very positive but mm. sometimes about the game stuff and it's not just raid it's all the other games that i played as well when i'm super into it i really like the game and then sometimes you just get really passionate and angry about some stuff and you don't really think about the other perspective that maybe there's i'm sure there's good reasons for different things and things take time and maybe they already are fixed or something like that or maybe something isn't possible to do and they have thought about it but for instance mm -hmm. like uh swapping like artifacts and like filters for tavern and this kind of stuff i would probably say that pretty much like I mean, there's gonna be not gonna be anybody in the game who doesn't want those things, yeah, and yeah. people have been asking about them for years. And I know that you played a bunch of the at least tried a bunch of the new games that have been released recently, like mm -hmm. um, AFK Journey, Dragonair, What's of Realms. I feel like all of these games kind of have those, uh, like let's say the uh, swapping items or the like the UI stuff is maybe a little bit more fine tuned than Raid. And Raid has been a little bit lacking behind. Of course, these are like new releases and so on. But then on other aspects, like there is a reason why everybody's playing Raid. The combat is very good. I feel like those games don't really hold any type of candle. If we talk about the PvP aspect, for instance, I know many Raid players have tried like, uh, like for instance, Watcher of Realms. And the PvP mm -hmm. isn't quite what you have in Raid. And then when they try those other games and then they play Raid, they get like extra frustrated that when Raid is so much better on these certain aspects of the game, but then yeah. some are like a little bit outdated, then they feel like they are just doing it on purpose that it takes too long time for players to like play the game and it pumps up their numbers. And I know that you mentioned it on the video as well, that they were specifically mm -hmm. asking you about how much time you spend on the game. And I guess they're looking into it. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I, I mean, a, f a few points there that you were saying, like, I, I totally agree as well. Like, um, like Dragonair and an AFK Journey, and I'm playing Honkai Star Rail as well. Like, they've slightly different things. But I remember playing um, a, a year or two ago, maybe, Awaken Chaos Era. And, like, they literally, literally had the auto feed. I'm, I'm pretty sure, if I'm remembering right, they literally had the, you know, auto feed your low star champions like you would get duplicates and auto feed the duplicates just like raid is introducing and like that's old i think other games maybe summoners war i could be wrong wait, about that wait you didn't try watch of realms no i've never tried watch of realms okay, so so i heard it's good it's, yeah. yeah i would say like watch of realms has that like perfectly it has basically mm. from the pictures that plario showed I think they have the exact system that Plarium is going to do. That yeah, you can, it's exactly the same. Yeah. You, can, <laughs> you can just go to Tavern and basically choose, like, rank up all champions to four star, and it's going to use up, like, all of your brews and level up as many champions that you can do four star. And of course, you can choose to do only a certain number, but it will automatically rank up champions and rank up multiple champions if you want to. But, yeah, that's cool. Yeah, yeah. And it's multiple other stuff, like in Watch of Realms, you can instantly swap the items from two different champions and it mm. doesn't cost anything so it's super efficient that if we talk about in raid terms like let's say that you do arena and then afterwards you go you go do hydra and you can just put your best nuke build on your tranda and not get any losses about it and it doesn't take any time those kind mm. of things about watch of realms feel like so much better than raid and it does feel like they are very simple easy fix that they could do but then it kind of does lack behind in the PvP. And I would say probably graphics too. I mean, for me, as at least, um, not just PvP, but the combat and graphics is really the best thing that Raid is at. And the other new games, I feel like they kind of do the other things well, but they can't really 
compete with Raid on that. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I, I'm actually playing Honkai Star Rail. It's like my main sort of second game. I've got my second channel on that now as well. Like and comment and subscribe, everyone, uh, if you're into it. But like, that's quite a fun game because it's it's very different, actually. Like I played some Dragonair for sponsored videos and I got kind of I got oftentimes with these other games, I get bored. Um, one thing I like about Honkai is that it's uh, it's it's such a different game. It's very, very story focused. And there's constant story updates and the story is actually good. Um, so like it, and it doesn't take too much time to play every day as well. So it's a very different game from Raid. And I think for me, they complement each other pretty well in terms of my day. Um, but yeah, I mean, as you said, though, like a lot of other games do have these quality of life features. And I, there's no question, like I would have liked to see this stuff sooner. And like I... I would definitely like to see more stuff, like more champion balancing. Like, absolutely. Yeah. See these these types of quality of life features, see them more often. Uh, and that's the thing, like, you know, it, it's it's finding that it, as as an objective judge, like, that's the thing. It's like, does Raid do enough? That's, that's a fair question to ask objectively, uh, for sure. Like, do they do enough? Should there be more? You know, you could you can make judgments either way. I, I haven't really decided which way yet. I mean, certainly I will say I would like more. I'm glad they're doing some stuff. That's great. Uh, I'm always going to want more quality of life and balancing personally. Uh, but, you know, obviously at some point, you know, you're asking for for so much and it's like there's not going to be the budget or the time for that. It doesn't really pay off. Um, yeah, it's finding a balance like they're obviously going to be driven as well uh, just from a a, a, a audience retention and acquirement perspective to have these quality of life things because if someone sits down and is really frustrated with that stuff and they're like oh well you know i've just installed let's say raid and watcher of realms on my phone i'm playing both of them wow it's so much more fun in watcher of realms i don't have to do all this tedious stuff i'm just going to play that instead i'm going to ditch this raid game um you know that's something that they're going to want to change because of that as well uh so there's always an impetus to improve more but yeah. Every developer wants their game to be the best game in the world, right? Well, <laughs> of course, of, of course, and they want to make money. Of course, not nothing wrong yeah, with that. Yeah. <laughs> but sometimes, myself included, but the community in Raid often is like very cynical that it often mm. feels like every update that Parium does is not to make the game better, but is to make more money. Like we get uh, yeah, primal yeah. shards or prism shards, we get uh, uh, ascension, but no ascension to. I mean empowerment <laughs> but no empowerment to epics but we got it now mm -hmm. so that's super cool Th there's tons of things like the souls kind of feels like they're milking players sometimes and i get it yeah. i mean one thing for instance that was bothering me was the champion uh rebalancing because last year we basically almost didn't get any of them at all and before that they did them kind of sparsely but there was some really good champion rebalances i don't know was this maybe before you quit the game? But for instance, Gandrafon used to be completely useless champion, and then they made a massive rework on it. Did, did you play? Yeah, that was, that was before my time, unfortunately. But I remember hearing about it for sure. Yeah. Yeah, and um, even something like Mountain King, which is kind of not relevant anymore, but Mountain mm -hmm. King used to be way worse, and they did bunch of good rebalances, and it felt like they kind of um, they had it right, but they didn't do it enough. But then yeah. they kind of like took a year break from it. And I remember already last summer, so almost like a year ago, the, like this is going back to what you were saying about the fact that uh, it takes a long time for them to develop. And often they have already done things that they like, um, like people are asking. But I remember in last summer, the uh, community managers were saying that we're going to have lots of more champion balances next year. And yeah. <laughs> my, myself and other CCs kind of felt like they are like uh, playing a joke on us. That what do you mean next yeah. year? W why not now? Like how can you say it like that? But they have kept their promise, and they have said that basically their plan is that on every uh, major update that they do this year, there's gonna mm -hmm. be at least a couple champions that get buffed or rebalanced. Maybe not like a massive update that there's twenty different champions that get reworked but they're planning to do it consistently and kind of uh, slowly make the game better. Yeah, I, I actually thought that was a, a big mistake that they made was saying, because they said as well, it's yeah, the optics be were really bad. Andar. 
they, yeah. they, they made it sound very bad, but now now it's kind of getting better. Yeah, it's get, it's getting better now. But yeah, like they they should not have. Like I think it was fine for them to say we're gonna have a big focus on champion balance in 2024. That would have been fine. But like when they were like, yeah, we're doing Fortis and Angar, and they told us this months in advance. I was like, well. If you know you're gonna change them and st- like, can we not do this faster? <laughs> like that was definitely a thing where I think it would have been better if they didn't tell us the specific champions and uh, or explained it a bit more. That that was a bit of a mistake in terms of their marketing. But um, yeah, like uh, for me, I, I like speaking again. I, I I would probably like to see you know multiple champions balance maybe once a month. Um, I'd even be happy with every couple of weeks. And for me, I, I'd much prefer more substantial balancing. I, but I think that would put people off. Um, that's just something that I've, you know, I have to make peace with. A couple of things to make peace with. Number one, like obviously I've got more of a background in in MOBAs and stuff like that, where it is uh, more competitive. Um, and, you know, there, there's more of an interest in fairness because everyone has, you know, well not always but you know you, you can in theory have all the champions unlocked and stuff like that mm-hmm. uh whereas in raid like if, if raid was to do the level of balancing i would want uh that's one thing i learned from reading comments is that a lot of my commenters would absolutely hate that because you know for me i don't mind like i'm pretty open-minded to switching up my strategies and uh, if my favorite champion gets nerfed and they're not that good anymore i'll have a new favorite champion and i'll switch it up like i'm very adaptable and flexible but a lot of people aren't I'm like, if you keep, if there's like, especially more casual players where they're playing at a much slower pace as well. And it's like, if they go and build up a champion and then it gets nerfed and then like the meta is constantly changing, that that would really undermine them. And I was like, okay, I guess I, like, I'm never going to get my perfect game because it would, it's not the perfect game for most people. Um, so it seems very unlikely. So kind of, you know, that's one thing I'd love to see absolutely tons of balancing. Like, like I said, you know, I would have nerfed Trunda into the ground. Well, no, actually I didn't say, I said I would have reworked her to keep her still good, but you know, balanced and fair with everyone else. Like I would have done that in a heartbeat. Um, but, uh, I mean, a ton of my comments, I think I put up a poll and like loads of my comments were like, no, we, we don't want that. So I was like, okay, you know. I just totally disagree, and that's just the way it is, you know. Wait, are are you talking about Tranda in relation to Hydra? Or yeah, yeah, back yeah. In, oh, okay, because yeah, just you know, for Hydra. Yeah, yeah because well, you know, I mean, her A two is broken, and just in general, like it, it for me, I, I just it it does not do sixty percent of the damage it does in the initial hit. It just does not do what it says. So I want to see it changed, but yeah, a lot of people don't. And yeah, like, okay, that's just the way it is, and you know, a lot of players, just the nature of a gotcha game. It's never going to have the level of balancing because people have to acquire champions again, often with real money as well, and, and lots of time and investment. And and they they're not going to. Most players, it seems to me, from what I've I've found talking to them, is they don't want to see the level of balancing that I personally would want. So, but and then again, the other thing to make peace with again, I mentioned is the money, and you mentioned that as well. That you know, like the, the game is really expensive, and I totally agree definitely features are clearly designed to get people to spend and again that's for me a negative it's something that you have to make peace with i think playing this sort of game uh, that that puts me off I, I i really enjoy pvp in the game but i enjoy it pretty casually because i feel like it's hard to enjoy it super hardcore uh because they can there's always someone that will spend more money than you and have an advantage so that puts me off you know yeah um we can have like a i can talk about this for like five hours but i <laughs> i do feel like back in the day the raid arena was actually very approachable by uh free-to-play players or low spenders i was mm-hmm. just talking about it actually in a couple other videos recently with with the rats and ash but uh there used to be many epic champions that were in Blood Arena, and I, maybe this is around the time that you just started playing the game, so you might not be that familiar with it. But mm. like, apart from like Madame Series, Wogot used to be very meta. Then there were many others like Sky Dutch Shaman, uh, Seeker. Um, what's its name? The I just talked about it on the other video. The ah, let me look it up. The I thought it was like barbarian but it's or oh sandless survivor there oh yeah yeah, yeah, th- yeah, yeah. There, there was multiple epics that actually saw use at very high level of uh gameplay in like pvp 
And mm-hmm. it kind of felt that like Raid went worse after that. This was also during the time when Tranda was the best nuker in the game. That's why I wasn't sure that were you talking about back in the day when everybody <laughs> was asking for Tranda to get nerfed in Arena, but you're talking yeah. about um, about Hydra. By the way, I do agree mm-hmm. that if it was up to me, I would definitely want to focus more on the balance. That would be one of my like favorite aspects, but I understand that... Uh, it kind of, uh, I mean, they need to do lots of things. They don't have time for everything, but I mm. guess they are focusing on that a bit more. I do kind of feel like, even though Raid is very hardcore game uh, and very, like, takes a lot of time, but like I said, it used to feel almost kind of uh, approachable and that even people that didn't spend could compete. Like, yeah. I have I have old clips when I'm using, like, Rector and Vogot, and I'm finishing like top 40 in Arena. This used to be possible. I feel like if Plarium tweaked this kind of stuff a little bit and made the put more emphasis on the like, let's say even the competitive uh, game balance, uh, and maybe did some. I feel like the, there's a lot of untapped potential with PvP. Like we need mm-hmm. to get the mm-hmm. clan versus clan PvP, and maybe some different formats in live arena to make it more approachable. I feel like Parium could make PvP a bigger thing. I'm not saying like eSport, but they definitely could make it a more popular thing and make content around it and commercials and so on. I feel like it's untapped potential that they have. Like, uh, I have talked about the fact that it would be fun to have, uh, like, if you look at the live arena, in the battle screen, there's like a menu that the battle rules or something like that. I thought that yeah. we were going to get some kind of tournaments or epic-only seasons or whatever. I really hope that's something that they're uh, something that they're planning to do at some point. Yeah, I would, I would think so too. Yeah, like that really sticks out, doesn't it? The battle rules, which has never been used. I, I'd be totally up for it. Like, like you said, I think there's, there's huge potential with Arena that they haven't tapped into. I think it's a pity. Um, so yeah, I'd like to see more of that stuff in the future. Uh, and I get one of the concerns i have with arena as well that like i gave them the feedback directly this was back earlier in the year and they were like yeah no nah, i'm not really too keen on that and i was like that's that's a pity it's a i think it's a missed opportunity was that um i think that there should be more um just participation rewards for arena because uh like for, for hardcore players like yeah arena is great but you know for a lot of players a lot of players like they don't even want to step in because they get their ass whooped and then they feel like they're not getting anything and it takes a long time. I, I personally think that, you know, you should have, you know, instead of 35 arena wins for that chest up in the top right, it should be just like play 10 or 15 battles, like win or lose, you know, that sort of stuff just to get people in and to, to just participate and compete more for the, the sake of, of winning and mm. climbing, uh, but to have decent rewards just for going in there. Because uh, I think people are are put off. A lot of people, I, I think, a lot of people just skip a lot of the content because you know it's it's <laughs> it's they're kind of casual and it's yeah it's, it's too often hardcore. yeah it's often too hard. By the way, you yeah. played AFK Journey, and they have the game mm-hmm. mode game mode called Honor Duel, which is basically yeah. like live arena in raid, but you don't use your own champions. What do you think about that? I feel like Plarium should just copy paste that thing and th- that could be like a, <laughs> that could be honestly that could be so massive. Like imagine if we could have like maybe content creator tournaments or mm. like they do competitions for art and memes and th- this kind of stuff. They could host like random like Plarium mini esport st- style of uh, tournaments between players and maybe the top rankers get to like participate in live stream or something like that. I feel like there's so much untapped potential that would be super fun for me as PvP player, and it would also be good like promotion and kind of uh, campaign material for raid. Yeah, I I think for that I think because uh, I did play a bit of it over in AFK. If I was to bring it in personally, I'd probably bring it in as like a limited time mode. So like maybe uh for like five days every I don't know, or four days, let's say over a weekend every two weeks, it would open up and there'd be like know different batches of of rule sets and stuff like that so that'd be more of an event like not something you're doing every day because that's what thing yeah. afk arena was like it was kind of always open and then it kind of for me it was like oh it's just another thing to grind in a sense i thought it'd be more fun if it's like an event and be like oh cool yeah like this weekend i can jump into arena and it's like everything is 
it's perfectly balanced every like there's no gear advantages champion advantages it's just all equal and like there's a fun sort of roguelite system of building up your roster um and like oh what are the rosters in this weekend and people can make videos on it see who gets the furthest i think that'd be really really sick yeah just yeah. copy and paste as you said <laughs> with a couple of tweets yeah 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 for those people that don't know what we're talking about in yeah. afk journey there's basically like a live arena game mode but you don't use your own champions and it's like a tournament that you need to get either nine wins or the tournament ends if you get three losses, but you win if you get nine wins. And you start out with like a couple random presets that you can choose from in terms of what champions you get. And then after every battle, you get tokens and you can buy champion upgrades and items. And it's kind of this own like RPG PvP live arena tournament. And of course, it's very like approachable because you can start a new account and be, be rank one on that game mode if like if you're that good i guess yeah exactly yeah no it's a cool system it is cool i think one of the downsides i've heard i was actually chatting to chosen about it a little bit because he's playing uh and he was like he's pushing for the top of that oh um, he's yeah yeah but he was saying that one of the problems is that it can be quite random like in terms of what you get and that uh so that can be a bit of a downside like he's like even the best player like the number one player can still go in and lose like three of these in a row or something easily yeah bad luck so I, that's a bit of a downside. actually i'm i'm like i think i'm rank 18 on my server on it i'm Ooh, pretty nice. i played it a lot as well and i totally mm -hmm. agree like from my opinion i have lots of like uh like because you don't do these tournaments Oftentimes, I can get like nine wins, zero losses, or zero uh, zero wins and three losses, and basically instantly lose the tournament. And it kind of depends what uh, champions you get at the start and what kind of RLG you get that how you open the tournament. Because if you get off to a bad start, then there's often no comeback. But I mean, you're always gonna have RNG, so you just have to deal with it, I guess. But by the way, I have been I have been pretty active in AFK Journey. I don't know, do you play it anymore or Castle? No, unfortunately. So I, I did play it for a few couple of weeks at the start. I don't know how long I played it for, maybe a month. I'm not sure. I played it for a good bit at the start. I think about a month. Uh, but then I sort of been, <laughs> ran out of time, honestly. I just like couldn't quite squeeze it in. I missed a couple of days and never went back. <laughs> you know, it's one of those things. Um But yeah, I enjoyed the game. I guess for me, for AFK Journey uh like i, I it's, it's, it's the way i feel about most games honestly is like you know I, I really enjoy them for a while and then you know kind of get bored raid is pretty unique in the fact that it's, it's kept my attention for so long um but like it was just a lot of time on my phone because i'm doing the honkai stuff and I, that doesn't take too long but doing raid stuff as well i was like man i'm spending my whole life playing these mobile games so i've, I've dropped afk journey for now and I'm spending more time doing other things yeah, um, honestly, yeah. you're kind of making me want to try Hongkai because I've heard other people talk about it, but... Um, yeah. There's no PvP, so oh, people oh. might not like it. <laughs> but people are making lots of content on it that seems super interesting. That's kind of kind yeah. of yeah, what got me. Uh, in AFK Journey, actually, it's been up, I guess, a little bit more than a month at this point. Mm. And it kind of feels like we ran out of content. Like, people yeah. pretty much hit end game they completed all of the afk stages if you have been active and um, whatever doom tower i forget what it's what it's called in that game but basically mm -hmm. you finish the story you finish doom tower you finished afk stages and there's pretty much nothing to do in that game right now so they kind of yeah. ran out of content it's very different in raid because there's endless content and i guess um you i don't think you know i don't think we ever talk with you about it but i used mm. to play world of warcraft as well very oh, wow. actively so i i come from that background as well and i do like the like for instance in world of warcraft you have endless content by the way in season 12 to season 15 i was gladiator as hunter on every season so i was super into world of warcraft it's just super long time since i played it i haven't played <laughs> since mist of pandaria but mm. that's the type of game that you can basically play it all day and you're never going to run out of content because like players can create their own content and it's actually kind of like that in raid like of course there is like specific stuff that you do the doom tower and you do the live arena and so on but they are so time consuming and there's so many different things to do 
that you basically can play raid endlessly at this point if you really want to. That's how I feel about it, at least. Oh, yeah. You can easily, yeah, you can easily have the game running and be doing tasks in the game for the entire day, like at least eight hours, I would say. <laughs> yeah. If it was up to me, and of course, I'm not like the supreme like ruler of the world, but if mm. it was up to me, kind of uh, in relation to what Plarium was talking with you about uh, time consumed, I would tone down how long it takes to do the other content. Like, if it was up to me, I feel like at this point, if you can do the Doom Tower, there should be a way that you can instant complete it at some point. I think yeah, a yeah. lot of the content could be that way, uh, especially the older content that people have, like that was released years ago. Maybe we didn't even have six star items yet. Now we have six star items and we have primals and blessings and all kinds of stuff. A lot of the old content is very easy for new players. There could be easier uh, ways to skip it or do it faster, like we got right now in Faction Wars when you can... Um, what What is it even called? When you can do the double keys? Yeah, super, super race. Great. Super race, yeah. I hope we can get more mechanics like this, and that wouldn't necessarily mean that people stop playing the game. If we put more emphasis on, let's say, Live Arena or maybe some PvE competitive aspects of the game, maybe new stuff, some kind of content that players can do as much as they want. I feel like Parium could go that route, but again, that could be out of work. Even if they wanted to do it, I'm sure it would take forever. So, Yeah, I, I didn't actually ask them. I would be really interested, actually, to if the devs sat down and had like a proper talk about what they might actually change in the game. That would be interesting, or like why they would or wouldn't change certain things. I know from chatting to like YST, um, that like uh, for a lot of the guys that you know were focused on Demon Lord clan boss, like the auto complete was actually like really rough for them because it's like uh, suddenly, like nobody now wants to have any key. Like remember, the, I remember when I started, there was loads of teams that were like, okay, you've got. I remember watching Deadwood videos. You'd be like, yeah, oh, this is like your your five turn setup. Like getting your order right, and then you click auto, and then you go. It's like yeah, cool. Like with the auto battle now, like nobody wants that, right? You want something that you just click and it does it automatically and you don't even see it. Um, so it's like, that sucked for them. Yeah. Um, to, to, to be fair, I mean, like I said, not to flex, but I literally played the game from the start. And I do remember early on in the raid, like in the first six months, people were literally manualing every single key on <laughs> uh, uh, on clan boss because there was no yeah. like, Deadwood Jedi wasn't a thing and we didn't have like speed tunes. And mm -hmm. people wasted like like the top clans. They wasted like literally a couple hours doing clan boss every day. It was like Hydra CVC right now, basically back then. But people yeah, were yeah. literally manuing all of their keys because also the champions were a bit different. People had a lot worse gear. There wasn't even six star gear. You couldn't do speed tunes. And basically the top champions. People would be surprised about this. But back in the let's say first six months of raid, there wasn't even. Um, war master uh mastery that didn't exist mm. there was only wow. giant slayer and that basically made it so that all of the champions with multi hit had a massive advantage over other ones on a1 and mostly they were used and stuff like um for instance juliana i don't know if you even recall this champion because she's never used on anything do you know yeah, her yeah. she used to be one of the best or the best nuker at one point because she does move the hits and she does poison and burn. This was the type of uh, stuff that people run. There was also, um, yeah. <laughs> what is the name? Is it Skull Crusher? No, Steel, Steel Skull. Steel Skull was the best because he had the cleanse for the stun, right? I, yeah, mm -hmm. he, he has it. And then he has poisons on A1. People were pretty much running these kind of champions and then multiple cold hearts and just spamming A1. That was the meta back then. Yeah. There's definitely something to be said for that. And like, it's something, you know, as the game keeps going, like it's five years old, like there's pros and cons, right? Like that uh, definitely a con is that level of complexity. I, I think the game is more, you know, a simpler game can be more enjoyable sometimes, like because epics are, are easy to understand. Like, I think now you come into it and like with mythicals and stuff, like they do so much stuff. Like mm -hmm. sometimes you're like, what the heck does this guy do again? Like he's got so many abilities. What do I have to keep track of here? Um... And that can be a bit of a drawback. Like the, when when it was more like you had the rare legendary and lots of epics, it's much more simple. You're fighting easier content, but that can be just as rewarding, maybe even more so sometimes. You know, it's uh, 
but it, you can't really go back to it. Like, how could we go back to it? It's so hard <laughs> with where the game's going now. I do feel like one downside for sure with the direction has been I, I like the idea of mythicals. I think they're cool, but like Cursed City seems to be quite strongly d- designed around having mythicals to unlock and do the stages. But like, you know, it, unless you're buying primal shards, you can't get them. Like I spent what, 50 bucks or maybe a hundred. I can't remember on primal shards. I still haven't got a mythical, <laughs> like, you know, um, they're, they're really tough to get. And that's a downside when they're trying to put out content. That's really hard, but you've got, you know, such a big gap between people that pay and people that don't and they're trying to make content that's hard for everyone i it, it big i think that's really hard to design honestly like i think curse city as well like hits the mark sometimes and then it goes it misses the mark other times it's way too hard and annoying and yeah it's like it's actually yeah. uh you remember last time when we were making a video we were also mm. talking about curse city and okay. i was saying that we could get the uh, mythical voids that you could use in any uh, room, and then you yeah, were yeah. you had the really good idea that we could have a mercenary faction that you can use on any room. I feel like we need to see something like that. Yeah, that would be cool. There's so many but, ways they could implement it as well. Yeah, because I know Saf now, like one of the things is is working on for for Hades.com. We'll see if it actually comes out, but he's got like you know trying to collate all the data for like how many stages champions show up, like how often they can be used and. Uh, curse city hard and it's like all the top ones by miles are the mythicals that because because again they can flip form so like if you've got a champion like i think lazarius is support and attack right so he can fit into support and attack rooms like it doubles the potential basically yeah i I was just going to talk about it when you said that Mm. uh, many primals do so many things that you forget about it it's kind of been a meme in my live arena videos because I often forget that like Lazarus is a nuker. You remember the fact that he has like a lockout, he does a lot of damage, he ignores shields and stuff. Mm-hmm. But he's also a reviver. And I often yeah. forget about I'm like, okay, now they don't have any reviver, I'm good. Never mind. Lazarus does revive your teammates with uh, the passive. Is it the passive? Yes, yeah, it's passive, yeah, yeah. Which one yeah, is this, it? Like, Lazarius is, is the one for me that that champion, every single ability is really strong and does something really notable. And he's got so many. It's like, ah, like, what do all of his things do again? What's on cooldown? I don't even know. Yeah, he, he has um, both revive and immunity buff, and he's a nuker. And block yeah. <laughs> block, uh, block buffs the buff and ignore shields and lock, lock out. And, like, he does, like, five different champions roles at once. He even has, like, a speed aura, like... And, and yeah. you can't lock him out because he's primal and he can switch the form and so on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> um, but like the, the mythicals are cool and like the faction unity stuff is cool. Uh, I, I do worry about the game at the moment that, I mean, at the same time, they've been power creeping and giving really good accessible champions as well, like Astra Dreamsong. Uh, Armands, I think, is way too strong. He, he's just, an, uh, what do you think about Armands? I think he definitely needs to be yeah. I think I saw you at a title a couple of days ago. So yeah, okay. okay. <laughs> I can confess that title was a little bit clickbait. I didn't okay. un- I, I I said that, but then I, I did talk about it a lot on the video. But mm. I was kind of uh I'm basically like 50-50 because mm. uh it's basically I love using him, I hate facing him. I think he's one of the best champions in the game for sure. Of yeah. course, there is other good champions, so I think it's one of those things that like I'm always crying nerves to Taras and Lockout and all kinds of stuff in the past from Plarium. And they have always said that they really hate nerfing things and they yeah. like to do things the other way. Kind yeah, of mythicals like, and White King Narcissus, so like Taras ain't around so much, Lockout, yeah, ex- that is good. <laughs> exactly. They kind of actually yeah. did fix Taras with Narcissus, so we need to give them props for that. But mm. uh, I don't see them, of course, nerfing, nerfing Armands. I feel like he's on the tier that he totally could be nerfed. I'm kind of 50-50. I could go either way. But probably the best way to do it is the way that Barry wants to do it, is to release some kind of champions that counter it or something like that. I think we need uh, Drog and everybody hates Polymorph. I get it. I'm By the way, I'm also a little bit contrarian on Polymorph. That I think it was good for the game. I think mm-hmm. it was needed, but it's maybe a little bit over the top, just like Armands. But maybe they could fix both of these issues together that we have some kind of mechanics that you can counter polymorph, maybe. I, 
I feel like Polymorph should have been cleansable from the start. I don't understand why you can't cleanse Polymorph. Yeah, uh, yeah. Like I, 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 I can see where you're coming from for sure. Like Polymorph, it's good to counter the speed meta and the debuff meta for sure. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, like I, I felt with Polymorph, they could definitely like nerf the duration of the sheep or the the speed, make them faster. So it's not so fun. Like that can be the most devastating thing. Like you throw in Romantu, you try to strip them. Oh, he's polymorphed and now he's a sheep for two turns and he comes back half mm -hmm. HP, no turn meter. It like I think they could easily. There's lots I think with polymorph there's tons of tuning knobs that you could tweak. I think that's a slight downside with with the raid wave doing it as well is compared to other games like again, MOBA games where they, they can like tweak a champion like every two weeks um and they off sometimes do like constantly tweak them yeah try, like try world of warcraft out. when we were talking about it i mean world of yeah, warcraft famously like at least back in those days i feel like it changed a little bit but they mm. used to do a lot of champion rebalances and the people in charge of it were doing like forum posts and even engaging with players about it even yeah. though they were doing it of course people were constantly complaining about champion <laughs> rebalance and like hunters are like too easy to play and do too much burst and people always <laughs> yeah. had like this kind of opinions i mean i get it i had those but i did like the fact that they really put a lot of emphasis on it but of course raid is a bit different game i understand that it's not really trying to be that competitive like something like mobas like league of legends or mm. maybe even world of warcraft i understand that but i do feel like they kind of could go a little bit in that direction with with the live arena and stuff but yeah, yeah. i'd be i'd be happy if they did <laughs> we'll see i'll be happy but <laughs> yeah, i i feel yeah, like I some... my they tend to do like fairly substantial balance changes and not that much and and like you said they don't really want to nerf champions which makes it it, it tough it, i i just think it's hard to balance like i think it's genuinely really tough like if you are not allowed to nerf something that's overpowered, like you have to design more overpowered stuff in the future to to make them not overpowered anymore. Like, how do you control that power creep? How do you make it engaging? Like, that's that's really tough, man. <laughs> like, and even if they game. were okay with nerfing things, I mean, they have done it in the past. I'm sure they have done it in the recent times, but they hate doing it. Let's put it that way. Yeah. Yeah. But even if you like, um, even regardless of that, it's still very hard to balance a game like Ride. Kind of like mm. I was saying, comparing it to the other games, that the other games do some stuff very well, like they are focusing on the user-friendly stuff, but Raid is the undisputed king, in my opinion, in terms of the combat style. The combat mechanics are actually very complicated, even though it's kind of, a, let's say, old-school, uh, maybe turn-based, like, what, what, what are they called? ARPG? Not ARPG. The JRPG? JRP, yeah, JRPG. They're my favorite types of games. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, I used to play those those as little, but if we talk about yeah. some mainstream ones that other people would be more familiar with, let's say something like Pokemon. It's kind mm. of similar mechanics to Pokemon. You have like multiple skills that you use, and it's mostly turn-based combat, and then you have some passives and like items that you can use to like uh, build your team a little bit and come up with strategies, but. Uh, Combat is actually so complex that I feel like it is very impossible to balance rate. I, I, I don't think it's really yeah. something that is very feasible, to be honest, even though I wish they would do it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I guess the goal is obviously perfect balance is impossible. And certainly in a game as complex as this, I guess the goal is just to have variety and fun. Like, I, I, I remember, like, you were very good, actually. I thought your feedback, speaking because the broad topic of this i thought you had really good feedback in uh, the content creator chat i always chuckle every week when you were like this is the top arena meta it's all tyrus marishka like Sifi, i don't know ultimate death knight or whatever and you're just like the top 20 teams and they're all the exact same and this every week you'd post that in i thought that was a really effective form of, of feedback just been like this is super stale and and here's the proof constantly i i thought that was actually great yeah <laughs> and, and it's changed now so yeah yeah, Good actually, job. I don't know if it was because of that, but yeah, they did kind of change status. Uh, yeah. I thought it was kind of a very like blunt and effective way to do it. And mm. I was super fed up, so I was maybe a little bit angry. I do kind of feel maybe, maybe sometimes I was too harsh on the community managers, but maybe they, maybe they understand, hopefully. 
Yeah. <laughs> but, but for, for those people that don't know, there was like, uh, I guess, multiple months in a row. I posted every single, uh, after Classic Arena reset, I posted the picture of Top 30 Arena, and every single team is going to be Taras, Maritska, UDK, and Sifi. And I was always complaining about that. And I just kept repeating the same thing, basically, over and over again for weeks and weeks. So, and yep. yeah, I, I guess that kind of relates to what we were talking about. What was the point of this video? What I basically wanted to discuss is that obviously players really care about the game. That's why we sometimes get super emotional and angry. I kind of feel bad sometimes now seeing your content that maybe I was too harsh on Parium. And maybe, maybe after all, they are actually trying to make the game better. Maybe we could be a little bit more positive, try to give like feedback without, I guess the negative feedback works as well, but we could, we can give feedback and maybe they actually listen to it. Even if we yeah. don't think that they do. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's it. Like uh, my approach to it personally is I obviously give a lot of feedback and like, you know, I obviously do. You got to do sometimes that, you know, the clickbait and a bit of drama and, and yeah, just, just make it, make it kind of fun and exaggerated a bit sometimes. But um, yeah, I, I don't know. Like I'm, I'm usually not that, not a very emotional person anyway, so I don't tend to get too angry about it, but uh, I don't know. the way I see it, there's not much point in getting angry over, over a video game. Um, you know, just, just take it as it comes enjoy it give feedback about the things you don't and hope that they'll change it and yeah i don't know like i said it's kind of fun as well like i play other games on the side i obviously play tons of raid and you know i think that can be good too like th there's obviously plenty of stuff i would change in raid if i could uh but like you said as well there's tons of stuff that's enjoyable so i don't know just in general for life focus more on the good things and give feedback on the bad things try to change them if you can but yeah 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 but <laughs> yeah there are people yeah as you said as well like there are people like there's actual people in plarium right that's it like sometimes well, i i do find it funny sometimes giving feedback plarium is this sort of I, I i like to think of him as mr plarium it's like this this giant like plarium logo walking around with like one single idea it's just like one person we kind of uh what's the word anthropomorphize mm. um the company into just like one human being that's doing all this stuff and that hates us yeah it was being like a jerk yeah i get it yeah that's kind of it's kind of silly like sometimes yeah it's a bit of a caricature for sure sometimes. yeah I, I, actually i have done something like that it's one of those things that like i said i kind of feel bad about because i'm not usually very negative guy but the champion mm -hmm. balance specifically and the pvp is sometimes very frustrating yeah and yeah. one thing that i've said multiple times on my live arena videos which kind of became a meme during the Taras and Marriage Cometa, that I want to like, uh, we need to give like the like European Union or whatever, we need to give like a sentence to Parium and like give them like a fine that the employees must play live arena without Taras <laughs> and Marriage. And we need to <laughs> sentence them to play it so that they understand the consequences of the game balance and feel the frustration that we do. And that's maybe a little bit like uh, expressive and maybe mean way to do it, but that's how I felt. and. I said that many times, I kind of feel bad about it, to be honest. <laughs> yeah, I mean, like I said, I'm, I'm sure they're well used to it as well. And, and that's, that's not that bad. Like on the scale of stuff that you see out there, like, I mean, in terms, like even stuff I see, like said about me online and stuff like that as well, you know, like, God, there, there's much worse things out there on the internet. People mm. aren't always very nice on the internet. I don't know if you've. You've yeah, that, but, I yeah. I know I know. Trust me. <laughs> so I would also be very curious to know. I don't know if they. I mean, probably they wouldn't want to share their personal stuff. But I would be super curious to know, like, if we can see some accounts of uh, Plarium employees where they are at the game. Maybe there's somebody that is like hidden uh, employee that is high level in arena scene. I would be super curious. Maybe who's the highest uh, ranked uh, Plarium employee in Live Arena, for instance? That would mm. be kind of interesting, but I don't know if they would want to reveal that kind of stuff, to be honest. Yeah, probably not. It's hard to know, isn't it? Probably not. But I, I know yeah, from World of Warcraft, we find it very funny because the game director for that yeah, uh, the, the... has a Kostas. He does play, right? And like you yeah. can you can find his character and we were we'd always laugh because our guild was about as good as his guild like not you know not particularly good i mean we were maybe 
top 800 to 1,000. I think that the guild is lower now. I've, I've quit anyway for until the next expansion. I think they've fall, fell off a little bit, but um, we'd be very similar progress level to his guild. And we'd always know when Ian's guild reached a boss, you'd be like, nerf for the boss coming soon and then always a little bit after the boss would then be nerfed and was like yeah totally it's totally from him playing it like with you know a, a fairly casual raid team that he's mm. like he actually probably goes in and then makes adjustments to it he's like yeah because because he was a hardcore player from back in the day uh so i thought that that was uh that was funny so yeah that's maybe a little bit uh like too like first-hand approach but mm. i think it's good of course that they play the game I think you said something like that in your video as well, that it's good yeah. that they play the game, but that they are not too invested into it. That they're like pushing their own agendas and like trying to buff. Like, like I think in World of Warcraft, it's super long time ago, but I think it used to be a meme that one of the people on the game balance team was like a mage. And I think he competed in like, uh, like, like arena. And there used to yeah. always be like a thing that mages are never getting nerfed and they're always the best <laughs> ones in every season. I don't know. I guess you're more into raiding. Did you do PvP? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I did a little bit of PvP, yeah. Um, yeah. Not too much, though. I, I, I was basically the opposite. That I don't have the raid gear. I'm always running around in like gladiator gear and that's it. Like, yeah. <laughs> I don't even own like PvE item set at all. And I had like... Uh, I had more than 10 characters on like all of the different like big servers on both sides in like you. And mm -hmm. I was just like, I was doing arena and nothing else. Sometimes yeah. maybe R RPGs, I don't know if you ever did them. Yeah. They used to we be used to very... Bit, yeah. with, our, they, with our raid guild, like during the downtime, we used to do like the, the raid of battlegrounds. We were absolutely fucking terrible. My God, we just, we lost almost all the time. We were so bad. <laughs> Mm. Yeah, we, we were pretty casual like we were mythic raiding obviously and cutting edge but like we're pretty casual like i guess much better than most players but still not that amazing at the game so yeah we we definitely we had fun in the raid of battlegrounds but we never got very high or anything it was it was just for fun get yeah. the mount or whatever and, and be like yeah that's good enough <laughs> uh, rgps were like and again this is like during the mist of pandar it's super long time ago since i played mm. so maybe it changed but they were very famously kind of like a game mode that many people casually liked, but wasn't very active. And they were very like uh, filled with uh, like cheating. There was wind trading. There was lots of like bug abuse that people can go like on top of a hill and enemy can't like kill the flag bearer or whatever. And it was like considered like trash and nobody wanted to be part of it. The high end RBG, like the people that were finishing like the, is it top, top 0.5% or 1%? whatever you get that you get the title hero of the horde or alliance mm -hmm. it was basically just in europe it was like russian clans win trading battles and doing backup uses if they <laughs> met other people nice oh my god I, I think there's like solo queue and stuff in wow now i don't know i haven't touched pvp in age. i've just been PvP? Raid for the oh, last okay. few months and then I, I stopped playing but yeah i think there's solo queue and there was like a battle royale mode and stuff but i didn't touch any of it but Mm. Yeah, they're, they're doing some weird stuff. <laughs> yeah, anyway, I guess we had a very long chat, kind of, maybe. Podcast, right? Yeah, yeah th th this was more like a big uh, conference call discussing the future plans for <laughs> Plarium, maybe not in a serious way, but less serious way. Is there anything else that uh, I left out that you want to say to the players or the maybe the community managers after like uh, dissing <laughs> them so much? <laughs> No, I, I, I don't know. Again, like just the my, the broad, broad topic of the video, like I, I think giving feedback is it's n never a bad thing. I, I, I do think giving feedback is a skill. I will say that like you can give good feedback, you can give useless feedback. It depends how you give it. Um, but I think giving feedback is really valuable. Um, obviously, giving feedback, you have to rely that the other person is listening. And I mean, who knows exactly how much they're listening, but they, they seem to be trying to. They certainly have a, a reason to. Like, that's the, that's the uh, you know, I, I definitely think this whole idea that, you know, Plarium hates us and doesn't and wants to make the players miserable. Like, obviously not, you know, for one thing, they'll make more money if people are happy and want to play their game and play it more. That That's good. So they've got good motivation to do so. Um, yeah, I think, you know, keep giving feedback. That's good. Obviously, you know, try not to get too angry. Sometimes you will, but yeah, mm. like, you know, 
try, you know, just yeah. generally try rein it in. You know, like you you can genuinely say like, okay, whatever, X in the game totally sucks and it is just terrible. And this is why, you know, you can you can explain it really clearly and you can absolutely slate something and say it's like the worst thing ever um without you know getting really angry about it it's like when and another thing like when you get angry people are also much less likely to listen to your feedbacks they get defensive and etc and all that sort of stuff but um yeah anyway look feedback's a skill giving good feedback is super valuable you'll get angry sometimes i'm sure the community managers are are well used to it they have to have a i i would not want that job you have to very have a very thick skin to have that sort of job yeah i um, don't think i could handle it i will say like you were saying before that you're not emotional i would mm. say that generally i'm not i'm also not emotional emotional at all but if something like really gets to me then i get like super like i get like critical hits from like emotional damn it so normally 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 i'm like immune to it and it doesn't affect me but if it reaches like certain threshold then i get like super depressed about some kind of things but yeah i yeah, definitely yeah. couldn't yeah. be able to handle that job if somebody's like telling me to fix the game balance every day so i yeah, i promise yeah. to be a good boy i'll be a little bit more <laughs> concise with my words i'll be more uh, i mean i think i was constructive but i maybe worded myself a little bit too strongly and i could be more nice about it let's say yeah i, I will i pledge to 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 do a raid is dying video every five months instead of every four months let's we'll do that <laughs> yeah i i haven't done one of those yet but maybe it's about time to to yeah, be part think, of that i feel like we missed the boat a little bit with the quality of life stuff i think the last month or so was like that's it the ideal point for making raid is dying video is in the downtime so next ideal point there's because there's going to be probably all this quality of life stuff coming now i guess around november that's the ideal time when it's like the new content hasn't really been revealed because presumably there's something big coming in december mm. uh so people will be sick of the current content that's the ideal time you got oh. you got to time it well okay you're you're very strategic about that i'm i'm not i'm not that into like this yet like i when we were doing starting out the video, I'm like trying to figure out how to set up the voice call and so on. But you're <laughs> kind of super into the meta, like you you know how to do this. Yeah, you have to you have to have, you have to have some fun making videos as well. Yeah, like, I, I have I have fun saying Trenda needs to be nerfed in as many videos as possible, just for the angry comments. <laughs> people get people get so mad about it. Uh. Yeah. Okay. I I do that as well. Some sometimes, like I said, with, with the Armands thing, I put something like Armands nerfed question mark something like that, and I didn't actually mean that I want to say it. I'm kind of neutral on it, but I mm. precisely did it just to get people uh, voice their opinions. Let's say. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I have been trying to kind of like focus on that lately. When I started taking videos a bit more seriously, I've been putting myself in thumbnails and trying to be like more strate strategic as you said about this kind of stuff yeah it's always tricky like uh, yeah yeah so uh, most of the i think i most of the time i'm i'm pretty decent at, at like the sort of clickbait stuff because like with clickbait you want to have something that grabs people's attention yeah but you don't want to I, go to yeah yeah you also need to deliver on it like you know, yeah, it has to actually make sense uh, as well. Like if it's like super clickbait and they click in and then there's there's nothing to do with it. It's no yeah, good. Yeah, I, um, I sometimes have that issue on my live arena videos since they are super long. That oh, I have yeah, like a, yeah, yeah. I have like a two hour video and then maybe I talk about something like 20 minutes and it's big part of the video, but it's mm -hmm. like after 30 minutes of the video and then I make that the like title or thumbnail and then people are like complaining that I have to watch like 30 minutes before you actually talk about that or something like that. So. I have yeah I, yeah yeah I mean like again that, that comes back to feedback as well I'd be like okay like you can understand some people they want to see it straight away but like if that's not the type of video you want to make like you want to make a two-hour stream and it's it's diving in depth in live arena it's like ah I understand where your feedback's coming from but I do not want to act on that feedback <laughs> like it's yeah. making a different type of content for a different person yeah and i keep getting feedback from both sides that some people complain that the videos are too long and some people complain if i don't do the two hour videos so <laughs> yeah <laughs> exactly <laughs> yep but anyway i i mean 
I, we were supposed to end this already a while ago, but uh, I guess there's lots of things to talk about. But are you done? Is there anything else you want to say to Plarium or the players? No, no, I think I think I think we said enough for this one. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I, I, I didn't even watch the time, but I think this is gonna be a super one, but yeah. super long one. But anyway, thanks a lot for Noob Raids for joining this video. We will of course link him in the description and so on. And that's it. Tell me in comments, by the way, what you think about this topic. Do you think that may maybe we are being too nice and maybe Plarium is cynical and evil? Maybe maybe they are just uh, baiting the, uh, like, they did some propaganda to noobs and they kind of got other content creators to be part of it. Are we wrong? What do you think about it? But that's it for this video. See ya. <laughs>